Hey guys, welcome to Ringsiders. We are joined by Mr. Universe, Pete Phoenix. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. Thank you. That's, that's quite the what's nickname, happened? Mr. Universe. Yeah, it's uh, it's a big uh, big name to live up to. It, it is. I mean, it's not just uh, Mr. Earth, Mr. Denmark, Mr. <laughs> Galaxy. It's Mr. Universe. Yes, I, what, sir. what kind of pressure comes with that name? I would like, you know, just in the name of being, being the absolute best, I guess. <laughs> it's the, in it's the, the whole, universe. In, mean, the, in the universe, in the whole universe, right? If, if, so, there's, uh, if there's any aliens out there on other planets who yeah, are professional wrestling, you're already, yeah, exactly, <laughs> you're ready for exactly. it. Just, just bring them. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the one that stands out to me straight away is that we've got to see you go against uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Because, I mean, he was Mr. Universe how many times? So, I mean, exactly, we need to book exactly. this match. You know? That'll be a dream match, man. A dream match, absolutely. Hey, well, it seems like the, uh, the Universal Championship is made for you as well. You know, you know that thought came into my head a lot of times that that would be the perfect story if you're ever ended in, in the WWE, right? Mr. Universe. Mr. Universe going for the Universal title. The I Universal mean, Champion, it's, it's, yeah. Exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But just, just on the, off the off chat, I know Christian from Body Slam... Uh, we know Christian, we're friends with Christian. I'm sure he will listen to this. You need to book this match, Christian. Pink Phoenix versus Arnold Schwarzenegger. Make Agreed. it happen, man. Agreed. Make this happen, dude. But yeah, uh, we're doing a little bit of research as well, dude. And uh, one of the guy, the guy Tranger, Luke King Sharp, is someone who we, we've only recently ourselves got quite familiar with. Um, he's making a name for himself over here. Uh, how did that come about? What was it like learning from Luke King? Oh man, learning from Luke King was like one of the, you know, you have the the camps and the different stuff. And we had a camp in, in Copenhagen with, uh, with Sebastian from, from CCW. Mm -hmm. um, he's very good friends with Luke King Sharps. And that's how he got introduced. And he'd been wrestling a lot more than, than before we started, a lot of years. He had a lot of experience. So he came and did uh, a training camp for a week. I think it was in Denmark in the summer. I don't remember. I think it was like four years ago or something like that. Three, mm -hmm. four years ago. And like, you know, when you learn from that, those kind of, like there is the certain kind of people you learn from where it, it changes your perspective of wrestling. Yeah. 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 So like that was the one, like the kind of experience with looking sharp, like that changed the, the mindset for me. And he, I remember one of my, on the training camp, having a match uh, on the show day with him um, where I was working babyface, he was working heel and just the whole uh, setup of how to work a match. Mm. calling and and the, the different stuff uh, and all that I really learned from from him uh, it was the really first one to learn me that so so yeah that that's it's an important thing to have and you know in your, your back as you know how to build up a match and we know like the different characters and, and how you do it with the gimmicks and mm, the yeah. good and the bad guy so, so yeah but it's amazing amazing dude uh, cool 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 dude I really like him a lot the, so. the reason people say that wrestling's like a like an art form is uh, the structuring of the match is basically like you're writing a song or putting a film together. You know, you exactly. have the introduction, you have the, you've got to progress the, the match as if you progress a song. Uh, exactly. You know, it's not easy. No, I, I always saw I always saw wrestling as as like the I'm I'm a big uh, storytelling guy. Yeah. So for me, it's like every every match, every every feud, every storyline, like you know, telling the story not with words but with our bodies. Yeah. Um, so like that was the, the, the a big thing for me to do uh, to show emotion and to tell that story in the ring, right? So so without him it was like definitely <laughs> would have been tough if I hadn't got that in there, the basics, right? So. Yeah, because he, he seems like a very underrated guy. Like I say, he seems to be making a lot of names for himself at the minute. I know he's got the dojo going as well. Yeah, um, man. Which is a great thing. Have you been a part of the dojo then? Been a part of every single class up until now. Going to be a part of the next four as well. Ken, I'm really looking forward to some of the names coming on there, man. It's going to be amazing. I think I saw like, some of them earlier. Uh, there was Bull Dempsey from NXT yeah. coming on. That's a good one. Exactly, it's an amazing one. I can't wait for that one. Yeah. He's, I actually, I actually met Bull Dempsey a few years ago, and he's such a cool guy. He's such a sweet guy. And I, when I met him, I was like, "Oh, you're not that much bigger than me." And then I realized. You could probably kill me and then eat me for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, such a cool guy, really cool guy. But um, I, I'm, yeah. really, I'm really looking forward to just incredible coming on as well. Wow. Uh, yeah. Like for for uh, when I was a fan back when I was like still a fan, of course. But when I was before starting wrestling back in when I was 14 years old, I'm almost 24 now. 
Um, when I, I got an interest in wrestling when I was 14, and I started watching the the wrestling one-on-one videos that yeah. Just Incredible put out on YouTube mm. to get the, the the locker room ethics and the ring psychology and selling and everything that he explained. There is major, major things I learned from him back then already. Yeah, well, he's another guy, like I said, a, a guy very underrated. I don't think, you know, Just Incredible doesn't get the recognition that I think he deserves. You know, I know... He struggled with demons these past couple of years, but he looks like he's getting himself better. Yeah, and like you say, I mean that's that's one hell of a mind to be able to pick. Yeah, it's gonna be. I can't wait for that. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> he's he's a great guy. He's, I mean, God, I remember Aldo Montoya when he was there. Uh, yeah. I'm sure my age now. Oh, your age now, Jamie. I know, right, dude. You had, <laughs> yeah. to, you had to tell us that you're 24, didn't you? I'm 37 in 25 days. And now you make me feel really old. Yeah, it's always the first thing when, <laughs> yeah. when you speak to these wrestlers, and me and Jamie are both in our thirties. You're 24, whole life ahead of you, talented, you know. And me and Jamie are just sat speaking, thinking, wow, we are so old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. but it's, I always, always been, always been used to like working with, with like my, my own trainer, my, my personal wrestling trainer who got me into the whole thing, co making Hangman. Um, he is like double my age. Mm. And, you know, I started working with him when I started to wrestle. So. Well, I was going to ask you about him as well, actually, because you obviously he trained you, and I believe Chaos as well. Um, Chaos. Uh, I had, I had, uh, I'll say my basic trainers that that, that formed me the most would be looking sharp, but uh, like he, he's he's there as part of them. But really formed me was uh, Coming Hangman, yeah, and uh, and Chaos from Danish Pro Wrestling. Yeah, that's that's the I went to the Faker Break camps, the the famous uh, Faker Break camps in Denmark, where they pulled in talent from everywhere, and then uh, Chaos was there helping out a little bit as well uh, with, with with stuff like now and then taking over for the trainers. But I remember my first camp they had Screwface uh, Ahmed Ahmed, oh, and yeah, they had yeah. Nathan Cruz. On oh, the first okay. uh, training <laughs> camps, yeah. yeah. So I was uh, like learning from those guys as well was amazing. And then a couple of years later, later they had uh, Zach Gibson and Screwface Ahmed again yeah. on the camp as well. So like, that's one of those again, one of those training camps where it just changes your whole perspective on, on Gibson wrestling. Gibson is yeah. one of the best speakers in British wrestling. Yes, he's, he's so hateable but so yeah. good. <laughs> amazing. I mean, that- that's some good guys, John. I say we're obviously we're in the same city. We're from the same city as Nathan. Where we know Nathan. Callum's very good friends with Nathan. Mm. He's another guy, very underrated. You know, should yeah. be somewhere big. Oh yeah. And so that's another guy. I mean, that's a who's who of people to learn from. Um, mm. But speaking of the Danish scene as well, obviously Scandigraps before the pandemic was starting to make some noise. He was he was getting you hearing things about the the Danish scene, the Swedish scene, you know, the Finnish scene and you know, what's it like being for you seeing that kind of uh, rumbling happening? Well, for for me, it was amazing because it, it went from from working like four years, like 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 a tough two, like a tough three years of mm-hmm. putting on shows and getting a, a crowd and getting someone to come there every time, mm-hmm. getting loyal fans, and then like just just getting ourselves out in Denmark, and then all of a sudden it just snaps, and now like they know about Scandigraphs in the UK and like Germany, and like you know like yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's amazing how fast it, it just uh, it just evolved and it just grew, and it's amazing with the opportunities it opens. Like this interview right now, I wouldn't have I thought that would happen yeah, like one year ago, you know. So <laughs> well, even for us, dude. Like looking back, the first time we heard of. Uh... Scandi Graps was maybe June of last year, so it's still relatively new to us. I didn't know there was such a good scene in like Scandinavia or like the Nordic scene is incredible. And yeah. The more we look into it, there's so many wrestlers, so many good promotions, but not only are there so many wrestlers, but they're all so talented. And it's like, how did how did this come about? Like, surely we'd have heard of these guys and girls, <laughs> if, you know, if it's been around for a while, but. For us, we're, we're finding out about it for the first time, and it's so exciting to see this new emerging scene that has so much potential. I, to me, and Jamie, we've both said, we see it being the next, like, Brit Rest, you know, where that just came out of nowhere. Mm. We think in a few years' time, people are going to be talking about Scandi Graps like they talk about Brit Rest, and yeah. we can't wait. That would be the dream, you know, like that would be what we're hoping for, that we're hoping to do, is trying to get more mainstream in our product and stuff and to get yeah. out to those people, right? That's what we're hoping to do, like that would be the dream, right? Yeah, and then the pandemic comes along and, you know, shuts us all down, but this is what I mean, <laughs> like I said, obviously, like, we, we were hearing things and we were seeing things and, you know, we, we've had the pleasure to speak to a lot of people now, like Christian, like Emeritus and Pete Alessandro, we spoke to 
MJ Schill and Ali Sink from Sweden, you know, Regina Rosendahl in Finland, now yourself, he's given us that opportunity. No, again, I know all these names, and that's the thing, it's like a small little family up here in the north. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Met it. all those people. Yeah, well, that's it. He's, he's given us the ability to, to get you guys on. Uh, and like I said, the Scandinavian scene was really taking off, and obviously the pandemic's hit. It slowed everything down. I mean, how's the pandemic hit you personally as well? I mean, have you been able to still get out there at all, or...? Is it well, all like, down for you? Uh, it's like wrestling training wise and show wise is all down. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the Danish laws are not allowing us to put on uh, big gatherings uh, like at any kind of uh, any kind. They just opened up now for like outdoor stuff. So who knows? Um, hopefully in the summer, maybe a couple of outdoor shows if right. we can get back to training, of course, as well, because you don't want to get in there after what? almost a year, like what, eight months at least, I'm being so rusty. And like, <laughs> we had we had the first, we had the first, uh, the first uh, wave coming back in March last year, and then it shut everything down. Uh, and then we had, uh, I think we had one summer show and a show in November, and we had a show in, what was that? I think it was, yeah, uh, December, uh, mm-hmm. October or November, I think we had, we had yeah. Ragnarok around that. Uh, so we had three shows last year was we managed to pull off and then they shut down again with, uh, yeah. with the new virus, the new variation. And yeah. So yeah, well, same of us do. We've not had a show here since March. So we're, we're a year tomorrow since we've had a show. There the, you good go. Thing is, the good thing is for you guys, um, you've already had that hype before the pandemic and all of you, like it's like a collective effort. You've all been staying busy. You've all been doing these interviews, mm. uh, keeping the Scandi Graps name out there. And They're keeping it alive. Like, absolutely, man. I feel like there's you've kept that hype going to a point where there's more hype now during the pandemic <laughs> yeah. than before. People are now waiting for it to come back because more yeah. people are finding out about it through like IWTV, for example, with Body Slam. Um, people are now waiting to see what the Scandi Graps scene's about. Exactly. So as soon as it comes back. We're going to be following it for like show by show. Uh, oh, we're going to be on a plane. Oh, dude, we'll, we'll be there. We'll be there. Like, oh, live. yeah, please. We'll be there please. live. Yeah. I'll have two front row tickets for you. Oh, you man. Go. Yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> yes. We'll definitely be there. But, like, but the whole pandemic thing, kind of personally with with, uh, with working outside of wrestling and stuff, like it's, I, I've been very fortunate that uh, my work did not shut down. It was one of the works that kept going uh, throughout the pandemic. Yeah. So basically it's just been uh, everyday life for me with mask and without wrestling, basically. It's, uh, it's where I'll take it from there. Uh, but like at this point, like you really start to miss it. Like it starts yeah, to itch, just, you know, it starts to itch and it's like, I really want to get back in that ring and do some. Yeah. And now they, they open outdoors training. We talk to guys to taking a, a quick COVID test and then going out. If it's all, all good, everyone's good going out and doing some, uh, some good old wrestling on a, on a, on a you know, a field somewhere or something, you know, like. That's it, though. That's what I was going to say. I mean, you look, for example, you look over like in America, like GCW, they were doing, doing shows outside. And it was working fine. Uh, I think the US Indies have, have really stepped up and, you know, yeah. kept the indie scene in America going. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would be a great thing over in, in obviously Denmark, you know, getting a, an, out, you know, an open-air show going. That would be fantastic. I mean, that, that, that would be amazing. The only, the only problem is logistics, right? It's always finding the place to do it. Because we yes. had a couple before. I've, I've been a lot behind the scene in, in CCW. Uh, I'm working behind the scene as one of the, the media editors as well there. So it's like all, uh, you know, all from the heart, all the pouring into the, the scandigraphs and Danish scene. Yes. Um, so it's, it's just logistics. But we've done it before. We can do it again. So it shouldn't be a big problem. It's just finding, finding the right uh, time and place, right? So... That's it, dude. That's it. You mentioned, obviously, well, touch on it. You obviously you mentioned CCW. What was it like getting to work there? That experience, because they're they're a big oh, name as well. Like CCW is my home ground. Like yeah. I I was the first rookie training in CCW. Um, I was the uh, the first ever trainee coming to CCW, and soon after Sebastian Day uh, joined, Carlos Moore joined, um, and a couple of the the bigger names that you know from the, the scandal grab scenes. Yeah. So for like. It was, <clears throat> I got interested when I was 14, like I said, but there wasn't any training in my part of Denmark. It was only in, in Jutland with Danish pro wrestling. Body yeah. slam was not a thing back then as well. Um, and I lived near Copenhagen, so it's uh, like very far away from, from everything training. I remember texting like uh, Chaos and being like, hey, is there any training like here or something? He's like, no, there is over here and there is something in Malmö. Um, but I couldn't go at that point. I was too young to like travel all that way or anything. Wasn't allowed to, right? 
Um, but then it started up in, in Copenhagen. Uh, Copenhagen Hammond started up. I started training there and just been going since, yeah, I think since I was 18. Uh, so yeah, yeah, 2024 now, so almost six years uh, training and putting on shows and yeah, working behind the scenes. So for me, it's 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 everything. It's yeah. um, I pour all my time, I pour all my energy into this, and it's doing it happily because it's to the point where uh, I'm like I'm I'm happily doing it. And if I didn't want to do it, I was not gonna do it, right? It's because yeah. you do something because you really really love it, and that's the point I've gotten to with wrestling over the the last six years. Is that something as well you'd like to do in the future? Obviously not now. You 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 know you're gonna be wrestling, but you mentioned working behind the scenes. Is that oh, something yeah. you'd like to transition into? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I'm already doing it now. I'm all the the media uh, production stuff that we put out, all the matches and all that. Me and another guy sitting in the media group and and making all that from scratch. Um, so everything you see on Facebook, everything you see on uh, on Twitter, on YouTube, or Instagram is like some something that we put together. Um, but yeah, like if, if wrestling is not the thing for me it, right now, it is the goal to, yeah. to stay in the ring, but for sure, like if it's not where it's want to go, my career would take me behind the scenes as uh, some video editing or who knows booking in the future, maybe. Be, right. be honest. Come on now. You're going to be the first Danish Vince McMahon, right? Let's, let's yeah, go. exactly. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, we're just doing our research. One thing I learned about you is you throw a hell of a super kick. And Thank you. I mean, uh, and I'm a big fan of the Superkick, dude. My favorite Sean, my favorite wrestler is Shawn Michaels. There, there we go. There we go. All right. So my, that was my question. Are you a Shawn Michaels fan? Because I always find Shawn Michaels fans, if they become wrestlers, they always use the Superkick. So here, here's the plot twist, right? <laughs> so the guy who actually got me into wrestling was The Undertaker. Right. Yeah. So I was I was playing the WWE game, uh, and then was uh, making my own storyline and playing as the Undertaker and stuff. And I remember like, oh, this guy's cool. This is, this is cool. This game is cool. I can have my own briefcase and stuff and I can blah, you know, making your own storyline in the game, right? The older games. And then um, the the friend I was with, he took me downstairs to YouTube and he showed me like, all right, here is the Undertaker. And I remember watching him, you know, kicking the door uh, open of a burning casket and going in there and clearing the whole ring, yeah. right? Yeah. And it was like that caught me right there uh that that segment uh i was like that's fucking cool like i want to yeah. do that like that like that that was just like it's just watching like watching like a movie but it really happened you know it was like mm-hmm. it's it yeah. right there it was, i remember it was, those, yeah, that, that was that almost was, so live you know yeah yeah i remember him doing that that was one of the most badass things i've ever seen like the, the casket's legit on fire he just kicks yeah. out and walks out but <laughs> this this guy's a badass man absolutely exactly but so, soon after that, he got me into it. So I've always been a big fan and my biggest is The Undertaker. But soon after that, you know, you start to 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 discover guys like Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Saw the super kick. I was like, wow. You know, started training that at home. I'm a trampoline wrestler from heart right before I started yeah. training. Uh, legit. So, you know, doing a lot of stupid stuff on the trampoline. Um, but kicking my friends in the face was one of them a lot of times. <laughs> of yeah. I mean, we've all, all been, been there, dude. We've all been trampoline wrestlers. I mean, right? I'm a... Five-time trampoline wrestling champion there myself. You, you know, I'm, so, I'm only a two-time man. <laughs> we used to call it uh, uh, DBW, Danish Backyard Wrestling. There you go. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but for sure, like uh, Shawn Michaels was a big influence on me. It, right now, my actually my from I started wrestling and up until now, my current style actually transitions more to Triple H. Right. Uh, I do a lot of the the running high knees and knee drops as, as part of my characters, and I recently started doing the spine buster, but I still keep the super kicks. And I use took a variation of the Helter Skelter from Zach Gibson that I actually did in front of him on the training camp. I lifted the guy up and I spin him around down. He was like, "Motherfucker, that's my move." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was "Like, oh, I'm so sorry." Like, he's Where like, "No, no, no." Oh, what? You've got, you see, you do a spine buster, right? I do a like, spine buster, yeah. Arn Anderson, the best spine buster ever in the business. Yeah, I, I do, I do that variation, yeah. Yeah. So, where would you rank yours? Like, if Arn oh. Anderson's at the top, whereabouts is yours? That's tough, man. Uh, like, <laughs> like one out of ten. One out of ten, yeah. Put it out a solid nine, man. That's how you're gonna feel Love after. It. That's for sure. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Well, I know you sent us some clips, dude, as well, and they were fantastic to watch, but. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad you said because like obviously he's a Shawn Michaels guy. You was an Undertaker guy. I'm actually a Triple H guy. So it's glad, there we you know, go. There you're we the, go. We're you're the mix of all of those wrestlers. You're the, <laughs> yeah. I see why you missed the universe now. There we go. Right. <laughs> but um, 
Just on a side note as well, we're talking spine busters. Can we just appreciate as well Carl Anderson's spine buster? Yeah. I mean, it's a thing of beauty. Thing of beauty. It is. But it really is. not as beautiful as Mr. Universe is, of course. But it's. Uh, <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> then, obviously, you talk about the characters as well. You, you worked in Body Slam uh, with Christian. Um, what was that like working with Christian and Body Slam? Working with, with uh, Body Slam, prior to that, I worked CCW and Danish Pro Wrestling as well. So uh, I've been. Uh, uh, I've been a stable part of, of Danish Pro Wrestling, of course, CCW, where I was born, but Danish Pro Wrestling as well, uh, winning a couple of titles there. And then I like, recently moved to Body Slam. And um, like, it's it's really awesome. Like Everyone's cool. It's a professional setup. Uh, everything seems nice. Everything looks nice. It's all timed uh, to perfection, the way I like it as well. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, like it's it's really cool. Uh, I really like working for Body Slam as well. Also, because it gives me the opportunity to get out there in front of some fans who might not know. Uh, because, again, it's it's a small small fan base in Denmark, right? The hardcore yeah. fans, they know all three promotions. They know what's going on. But the fans who just like, you know, 50, 60% of, of the audience who comes in they're like oh it's wrestling it's cool let's go see it they buy a ticket for the first time i get to show them a little bit of you know who is mr universe over in uh, another part of denmark that i normally wouldn't be able to right yeah um so it's it's really cool working uh, with them as well with their fan base um yeah yeah and you mentioned obviously you're a fan of storytelling uh, and when we spoke to Christian, he mentioned that's one of the things he likes he likes to tell the stories yeah um so that must be a great fit for you as well i mean exactly the Emeritus- Epic Olisander the story has got me gripped, and you know that's what I mean—the long-term storytelling. Great story, story like exactly, awesome. exactly. <laughs> That's why exactly, and that's what exactly that's that's what I love about wrestling is when you get invested in it and and you get invested in the story of the of the whole yeah. match and the the whole thing around uh, surrounding it, right? So, so yeah, like I, I had uh, one of my favorites. I actually would say was would be one uh, against my former bodyguard in CCW, uh, where I backstabbed him after I lost the belt. And then, you know, started this whole feud involving his real life brother and my new protege and like beating up, you know, home wrecking the, you know, the old Triple H style. And like, yeah, it's kind it's, of watch uh, that anywhere. That sounds please, awesome. I, I can send that to please you. Do, after yeah. this. Please, please do, dude. Please do. That, that's... We, we, we mostly, and for the fans listening to this as well, we mostly on Facebook. So if you want to go like see any of the stuff we did in the past, the shows and the highlights, it's on Comic and Championship yeah. Wrestling on Facebook. So. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, do you, um, we've all, I've never really asked this to guys before, but I mean, do you prefer being a heel then to a face? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love it. I love like it. It just comes so natural. Like I'm a nice guy uh, in real life, right? I'll try to at least. Uh, but yeah. It just comes. It just comes natural. Uh, it comes so natural to go out there and be like, F you, I'm better than you. You know, yeah. like it's it's so much fun. Because it's something you cannot, you're not allowed to do in your your normal life, right? In like, you know, it gets it, it's so much fun. I really prefer that. Yeah, I start, I think obviously, I... you mentioned obviously Triple H because obviously for me, two thousand, the year two thousand, there wasn't a better heel on the face of the planet than that guy. Exactly. Um, so to see bits of that in you as well, um, it is a pleasure, dude. It really is. So keep on doing that. Thank you. I will. Thank you so much. Um, but we always like to ask as well, obviously. When the world opens up, I mean, is the UK somewhere you'd like to come and wrestle? Oh, for sure, for sure. We're just working on the in the looking shop classes on CVs and stuff, and it's a the perfect opportunity to like you know to polish my CV and just to get out there when when the whole thing opens up again. Hopefully within a year, you know, the whole world opens up again. So Boom. we'll definitely Shooting those speak CVs. with the UK at some point, man. If you, yeah. if you come over to the UK to wrestle, we'll be there. We'll be there. Yeah, to boo you, as much as we won't want to, because you seem like a cool dude, we'll be there to boo you. Thank you. you you'll see why, and I'll, I'll guarantee you, you'll hate me when you see me there. Good, good. I love it, dude. That's it. You're doing your job. I love it. Is You get vibes from people, you know, and like, I get a really good vibe off you. Like, this yeah. guy is just got something healish about him that I really like, dude. You've you know got it here when it yeah. comes to wrestling. You can tell exactly. you, you think about stuff in wrestling. You... I am. I can already imagine the kind of wrestler you are, based off the few things I've seen and speaking to you. I can't imagine there'd be too much you do that doesn't make sense. If that makes. Mm. I mean, dare, dare we say you're quite cerebral. Cerebral, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was, cerebral that was assassin. Actually, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> My, there we go. There we go. The classic. <laughs> <laughs> No, but but yeah, like I really do think it's it's a lot of like you know why are we doing what we're doing uh, if it doesn't make sense, you know, and it's it's the you know you you know it when wrestling like wrestling can be bad, and yeah. wrestling and wrestling can be good, and when it's good like it's really good, so yeah. 
it's like trying to make that really good every single time. There's nothing it's, better it's in the world stuff. than wrestling when it's good. Exactly. And also on the same hand, there's nothing worse than wrestling when it's <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. It's either one or the other, and I, I I love it. You know, I'm sure you we're both all the same. We can't imagine a world that doesn't have wrestling in it. Exactly, it just no. seems so weird to think of. But uh, when it's good, it's good. And when wrestling does come back, I'm sure there's going to be a huge boom period worldwide for wrestling. And if you can get over here, awesome. If we can come over there to see you wrestle, a brilliant. We cannot wait. Um, is there anything coming up that you'd like to promote? I know you said there's not wrestling going on at the moment, but is there any upcoming projects for you? um for me personally uh not that much i'm like just anxious and waiting for it to open up again right so we can go back in the ring yeah. and get the the ring rust off yeah, man. Uh, other than that not like uh on that we're working on uh, on a lot of ccw stuff like we we rearranged the whole system backstage with all the the working environment and stuff um so like big things are coming for ccw hopefully some streaming uh and you know we we keep putting out matches and shows so like just uh keep updated on ccw on on all the platforms we are on all four platforms including youtube like so uh just basically just stay uh stay updated there go subscribe and uh yeah keep an eye on what's getting posted so yeah Hell yeah, man. Well, before we wrap it up as well, first of all, you've got to come back on because this has been really cool, dude. Yeah, I would love to. I would love We'd to. love to get you back on at some point. Um, but before we wrap up, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I, I have, again, again, from my good friend, Looking Sharp, who told me, man, you got to get a Twitter. You got to, like, <laughs> this is, Twitter is the thing, and Twitter never hit up in Denmark, so that's why. Like, it's like, I heard Twitter, about like, that. Why, why should thing. I get a Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> But you can find me on on Facebook as Mr. Dot Universe Pete Phoenix. I'm on uh, on the Twitter machine, as I, as I like to call it as well. And uh, I love Edge, man. He's 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 amazing, amazing dude. There as as Pete Phoenix CCW, and on Instagram as Mr. Dot Universe underscore Pete Phoenix. Hell oh, yeah, dude. and and oh, and and the newest one as well. Get on YouTube and watch when I post matches from uh, from my career as uh, Mr. Universe Star, uh, Pete Phoenix as well. So well, I'll put the links in the description anywhere. There we go. Hey, dude. Honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, it's been so much fun. Like I said, we're definitely going to get you back on because it's just been a pleasure, man. Um, so thank you very much for now, Mr. Universe, Pete Phoenix. Thank you for having me. <laughs>